Hi everybody, my name is Neil Malik. I'm with Knack Training, and this is Q&A with Neil. When I get a question via email or via Twitter that I think is going to be valuable to people who watch me on YouTube, I go ahead and record it on video, and that's what we're doing right here today. My email today is from Rachel, and Rachel's asking specifically about being able to take a large report and be able to filter it down. Specifically, let's look at our email. I have a document in which we select certain items by putting a quantity in a column. We'd like the result to give us the rows that have that quantity in that particular column. How can I do this? Rachel, this is kind of an interesting question. Most people get by with their filtering with something called the auto filter. But I actually like a lot the advanced filter in Excel. The thing about it is it often requires more work and more setup for people, so they don't like to use this feature. So in today's session, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to cut down on the number of things that are shown in a given list of information. First with the auto filter, very simple and very straightforward, something you've probably already done before. Second, with the advanced filter. So you'll see how we can take the steps necessary to create an advanced filtered uh, spreadsheet. And then we'll take it one step further than that. I like to advocate for people to save their coworkers time and energy by setting up macros and things that will automate these processes as much as possible. So in today's session, there is a, a download down below in the description of a macro, or actually two macros, one which filters the information and the other one which clears the filter. So we'll see how each of those three things is done. So here we are starting with our data. And uh, as you can see, the data needs to be filtered down based off of a number of different possible options. Uh, if I decide to filter it by price, if I decide to filter it by who the salesperson is, etc., I go to the data tab at the top of the screen and click on filter. And this gives me what is called the auto filter. It's because this is as simple as possible. I simply use the customer name drop down menu, for example, and check the checkbox of the customer that I want to see. By clicking that checkbox and hitting OK, I get a filtered result that only shows me those from that particular customer. Or in the same way from the date drop down menu, I can decide to show the ones that are between two dates simply by choosing the drop down menu and then entering the two dates that I have in mind. So as you can see, the auto filter is very easy to use, particularly because all you have to do is go to the column that you have in mind and use the drop down menus in order to isolate different pieces of information. Now the problem with this is that you now have a filter that's just on the drop down menu and one that's not typed out onto the page. So let's take the auto filter off and let's talk about adding an advanced filter here. To add an advanced filter, what you do is you go to the actual page itself and you type onto that page what you want to filter by. So you give it the name of the column that you have in mind, in this case the price column, and then its criteria. Let's say all prices greater than $120,000. So this whole thing, this two cell setup, is the full criteria. Now what we do is click on the data down below go up to our advanced filter button and you'll see it says okay you want to filter all of this data what are we filtering it by what's the criteria range so i click in that criteria range box and i select the two cells that make up my criteria and then i hit ok and what this will do is it will filter the bottom section by that top set and as you can see there, only those values that are greater than $120,000 are still showing. If I change it to less than $70,000, again, I click on the data, then I click on the advanced button, and I say, yes, please filter the list by this criteria and click OK. As you can see, only those values less than $70,000 still show up. So how do I make this as easy as possible to use? Because over and over again, we're typing out this set of criteria and then clicking on the advanced button up at the top of the screen. The easiest way to solve this problem is by adding a 
um, adding a macro. As you can see here, I've got a macro called Advanced Filter that you can copy that has the following things in it. It has the data range, the stuff that needs to be filtered, and a criteria range, what it's going to be filtered by. I have not only the advanced filter, but also the clear filter functionality. Anytime you see the green text in here, that green text is all the comments. So let's talk about data range and criteria range here. The data range, as you can see, is being set to a set of information starting at cell A4, and then it goes all the way down with that Excel down functionality and all the way to the right with the Excel to right functionality. So all you have to do to customize this is say where your data starts. If it's not in cell A4, you put in the appropriate information where A4 is. The second part of this, the criteria range, as you can see, is set to uh, D1 through D2. Now, if you had criteria that was not in cells D1 and D2, you would specify what cells it was in. And from there, that's the only customization you need to take on this particular macro. As you can see, the rest of it says, take the data range and apply an advanced filter. Now, down on the clear filter, as you can see, this first line says on error, go to next. And basically what that's saying is if there's any problems, just keep on trucking. And then right there, active sheet dot show all data. So what we're doing there is saying clear all the filters. So I'm just going to highlight these, copy them, and I'm going to put them into my visual basic area. As you can see at the top of my screen, I do have a developer tab open and available. The way that you would get that developer tab is by right clicking, choosing customize the ribbon and making sure that the checkbox for the developer tab was actually checked. So once that developer tab is checked, you now have all those tools and features devoted to macros and specifically the visual basic button on the far left hand side. So once this box opens up, we double click on sheet one, which is the information devoted to that first worksheet, and we paste the code in. Now, once again, these are macros that can be run. The clear filter macro can be run. The advanced filter macro can be run, but we need to give people a very easy way into it. So what we're going to do is build two buttons. As you can see on the developer tab at the top of the screen, about halfway across is an insert button. When I click on that insert button, that very first entry is a button to be able to add a button to the page. So if I click on button, I now get the ability to click and drag to draw a button and let go. And it will ask me, yeah, what would you like to run? And I tell it, oh, go ahead and run that advanced filter macro and click OK. Now it's called button two, which you know, doesn't really mean anything. So I'm just going to type in here something like filter data or, you know, something that would mean something to my coworkers. And now I repeat the steps. I click on insert. I choose the button option, the very first option here. And then I draw that button. I'm just going to try to do as good a job as possible here without wasting a lot of time. Come on. There we go. OK, so there's my button and I choose clear filter as the macro that's going to be executed. And I just highlight this and type in something like clear filter. Perfect. So now, theoretically speaking, I've got a filter data button that when I push on it should filter it so only those prices that are less than $70,000 show up. And if I were to change this to, let's say, a greater than 125,000, there you go. And I were to hit filter data, there it is. All the records that come back are greater than $120,000. If I hit clear filter, everything comes back for me. Just like that. Cl filter data, clear filter. Thanks for the email, Rachel. I hope everybody got something valuable out of today's video. Uh, if you like this video, please feel free to like and subscribe and share the video down below. And of course, email me, neil at knacktraining.com if you want to see your question answered on these videos. Have a wonderful day, and remember, be tremendous at what you do.
Thank you.